students in the structure here. The name cat cast comes from the fact that there was no hand working of the shell that was the main rough shell, as you'd seen in the other parts where he very carefully crafted things. His idea was take a caterpillar, bulldozer, <coughs> craft this thing, reach down in for some co column capitals that would later become railroad ties, but the entire structure, rough structure, was formed by a caterpillar and immediately cast over that rough hewn structure. That became a model, and a lot of this predates, and Apollo wasn't about patents, so he never filed a patent. But most of the freeway bridges in cities like Phoenix, Tucson, etc., when you see freeways happening, they are earth cast, just like the things Apollo invented with that little house right behind you. They were of that idea, but they were, nobody was thinking that way, and he made that happen. So he influences us in many, many different ways. The pool canopy is just beyond here. This little apse was made as part of the workshop in the 68 workshop with closure of the main axis. At that point, he was already thinking about building Arcosanti. In the spring of 68, we went that spring on several surveys to look at different properties up on the plateau where Arcosanti is. At that point, for all intents and purposes, his major needs to build here were totally supplanted by his vision of building that city. So this has sort of a shelf life of early 50s to late 60s with a few other extensions added to accommodate the production of the bells, et cetera, down here. Now, as <coughs> we talked about this on Sunday and as I woke up on Monday, I think some of you have gotten this little drawing digitally that we did on, on Monday. Yeah. Because Jeff and John Monier, your dean of the School of Architecture, Louise, and Jim McPherson, who's in historic preservation, had a dinner in a repurposed office building that we and I live in on the sixth floor downtown, talking about <coughs> what can happen here. And what I'm hoping from what I heard on Sunday, your classwork with this project, with this site, might be a wonderful way to excite the city of Paradise Valley. We've already met with the mayor after the dinner in our, in our, our condo. So we've started a lot of balls rolling. We've got the restoration thing happening, but I think there's a certain reality now, this balance of logic and pragmatism with poetry, is that if we can put you know, a dozen plus formable ideas, possibly we get the mayor who has a background in engineering and design, who would be good ears, not just a, a mayor, but bring him into the conversation, your final reviews, what you do could go a long way to kickstart this whole possibility. I haven't mentioned it to Claire, but there is a Solari exhibit at the museum, the third in a series uh, that will be here in 2017, just around the corner. And I bet you could find you a little free wall space after you present your project to pin up in the corridor of the Center for the Arts, if there was a reasonable work and some models that might be a little pop-up exhibit that could tie to this whole idea and get some exposure for the idea. Because I see you all being a catalyst to bring physical reality to some dreaming that hasn't happened to get people really buying into it. Now, what does buying into it mean in this, this case? <coughs> okay, you're all gonna vote for this. She's, she's, the, the, she's the, she's the, no, we're no, fine no. here. Yeah. This is, the sun is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, she's the, your, your, your professora. But no. my idea that I, put out yesterday was we are in the conservative red state of Paradise Valley. <laughs> the motto of this red state is one man, one acre. The fact that this exists on its own unique zoning, it predates anybody that lives around it by, by far. To get this approved in this fashion is almost impossible, but I believe it should really eventually have hopefully preservation and in the search for preservation should go on to UNESCO World Heritage Site, just as the people that met out at Taliesin have finally acknowledged those handful of right buildings with that, Taliesin being one of them. This is a site that that's, that's that important. Some of you might be aware, another interesting sort of Italian connection, I guess, but Simon Rodia, Watts Towers in Watts, California. When I was in your position as students, they wanted to tear it down as a hazard just as many people would come by here and say it's a hazard. This five acres is much, much, worth much, much more than as land than it is as this artifact. But the people there, rather than pulling, testing it by destructive testing, 
a bunch of engineers and architects from Cal Poly and the LA area devised, devised way before computers were sophisticated the kind of calculations that they could analytically prove its structural character and it never got torn down. And now it's the pride of Watts, it's the pride of that whole community and it's at this magnitude. This is where this place is. But towards that end, what we showed on the back of this little map, the site is five acres, it's 330 by 660, is one acre. This is the basic plan of this city. Everybody with the sprawl, and again, Wright got what he designed to all of our demise in Broadacre City. For all the great architecture he did, the thing that's had the most impact on the world was his concept of the sprawling city, and he led the belief that that should happen. So I would advocate that if, we're, if this is to be there, to be saved, possibly a strategy would be to take one acre at the back, which is very clean. We're just right, we're standing right here right now. So it's just a few feet past, back <coughs> to that buffer. You could enter it on a flag lot. You could develop a logical service and parking and plan for this, this whole site. And the site shouldn't just be any house. This house should celebrate everything that Paula thought about, dreamed about, and built in these first experiments. And that's not that it looks like this, but all the rootedness of that creativity this becomes an invention of just a house, but a house like no other. It's a net zero house at the highest plane about respecting water, respecting the sun, respecting all the elements that a house can be. Does it live in the earth and does it live above the earth? Because there is a horizon beyond. But I would like to believe that you would conjure up, you know, and again, it sounds so weird, but it's a single house. We're not gonna put 20 housing units back here for affordable housing. We're not going to bring people in here. But what happens is this land is sold as part of that house project. The worth of the land goes into the restoration costs here to be seed money to a much larger kitty that's needed. The house is an example. It becomes a model home possibly. And we put a calendar on it. So let's think realistically that it's just not your last studio at ASU, but it's the open act of a centennial celebration of the life of Paula Solari, who would have been 100 years old, or will be 100 years old, in 2019. So from your initial work here, and maybe it's a international design competition, and you're the, the groundwork for that. I'm not advocating that one of your houses that say gets built, but it's, again, getting people excited, getting the, all the mojo going for this idea. So the idea would be that in four years, a house could be built on this site, the year of his centennial, the house would be open and not sold. It would be a demonstration house for all the brilliant ideas of the architecture. The two would be in synchronous. During those four years, we could even have major restoration done on this site. Maybe not finished totally, but major ways there. This becomes, a again, a seed money thing to get more donations because a lot of people with the whole idea, she's already talking to the Pope and to the Premier of Italy. <laughs> Uh, about money from that connection because there is a fond connection with Italy here. And again, just like you have 